We're going to find out this weekend who knows best between the former player of the head coach, Bobby Bond, or the son, Terry Bond, who is now the head coach over at uh, Louisiana Monroe. Guys, we're going to go ahead and jump into a breakdown for this game between Jackson State and Louisiana, Louisiana Monroe this weekend. It's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow League Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. And for all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. Guys, make sure y'all comment, share, hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. Make sure you also do Coach a huge favor. Tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's not but positive vibes over here. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. So we're going to go ahead and tap on in this thing and get right down to the brass tacks of what's going on because you already know there's a lot of storylines this week that was going on about uh, Coach Prime heading over to play, Coach Prime and JSU heading over to play against Louisiana Monroe. One of them storylines was the fact that um, – FSU is uh, looking to get rid of their head coach over there and wanting to know if Coach Prime still want to come over there and be the head coach. Guys, what kind of sense does that make? One thing for certain, two things for sure. You got to understand this. Coach Bobby Bowden will ever for be the beloved son of FSU football, period, point blank, hands down. And the thing is, I believe, I believe Coach Prime is wanting to do something where he's just as legendary as Coach Bowden, as Coach Bowden was over at FSU. And I think he's found that at JSU University. Sometimes we got to look at sometimes we got to look at everything instead of, you know, just going with these goofy narratives. And why I say goofy narratives because the simple fact is why does the masses, the, the masses out here that's reporting this are continuously making it seem as if Coach Prime is looking to head over to uh FSU to become the new head coach. Listen, think about one thing. There was a few questions that came to mind for me. And one of them was the fact that out of all the things that Coach Prime has taught these players, since they've been in his since they've been in his presence, why in the world would he want to cut bait on them right now to take his take himself over to uh, FSU to become the new head coach over there? Not to mention, look at all that he's been able to accomplish in Jackson thus far. Now, the last question I had was, like I, I stated previously, why does the media continually continuously want to throw this carrot out in front of this man to see if he's going to bite to prove everybody wrong that? He's trying to stroke his ego, and he doesn't really care about the kid, or the, he doesn't care anything about the kids or the Jackson State program. Please, somebody help me with Sum this all up. Everybody wants to pull you down when they don't expect you to do well with the circumstances that you're in, and that's what Coach, that is what Coach Prime and JSU are currently doing. Which further leads me to what we can expect from this game coming this week. Louisiana Monroe went 0 and 10 last season. We can say 0 and 11 right now because they just lost to Kentucky last week. And that does not mean that they are some tomato can that JSU is just going to be able to kick up and down the road as if, you know, they're not going to come out there and compete. Understand this. They will use two quarterbacks. One, number four, Rhett Rodriguez. And number six, Chandler Rock. They have a running back on their team, number 24, Cam Roach, who has no problem with lowering that shoulder and dropping that boom, running that ball. He is a hard runner. Number 17, receiver, Boogie Knights. That's right, guys, Boogie Knights. He is their top receiver. If he's able to get lit upon the different matchups that the Warhawks put him in against the JSU defense, he might become a problem. So we're going to find out this week how stout that defense really is for JSU. I know we've all been riding high on the past two The weeks. things that JSU have been able to accomplish over the past two weeks, but now we're about to see how this competition is going to ramp up just a little bit more. The Warhawks, big uglies up front. They do a lot of zone blocking. They, the, through their zone blocking, they create lanes for the running backs to One run. One thing that I saw with their offensive line that I didn't like, when they're not zone blocking and they, they need to drive off the ball, they don't really drive off the ball. It's like they stand there, they put their hands up on you, and it's like they just, they just you know, they just move from side to side, side to side. I call that slow dancing. We don't slow dance over here. We bust your ass and get up the field to get where we need to go. That's what it's about. Firing off that ball, making sure you get to where you're trying to go. Help them understand, hey, listen, I'm not about to sit here and square dance with you behind. I'm going to crack your ass every time you get up here in front of me. And if you don't want this work, go on over there to your coach and tell me you don't want to play today. But in pass protection, like I said, they have a tendency of allowing the pocket to collapse, like, immediately. They, You know, like I said, if, if you stand there and square dance with them, they'll hold you there all day long just to allow their quarterback to throw the ball up and down the field. And I'm knowing, daggone well, JSU's not going to allow that to happen. Like I said, the Trish Militia up front for JSU. Number 94, Conish Miller. 
Number 99, Antoine Owens. Number 96, Jamani, uh, Jamani Crane. Along with those linebackers and defensive ends, 40, Keontae Hampton. 41, James Houston. 45, Arby Miller Jr. 52, Niles Gaddy. They should feast all day long. I see that defensive front getting six sacks on the game. I see them getting six sacks in this game this week. That's correct. Book it. I said six sacks in this game this week. The JSU defense will get. JSU offense and defensive line. You got to understand this, guys. Y'all got to bring it the whole game. There's no, there. listen, there is no tomorrow. There's no taking no plays off. If you come out there lazy this week, guess what? These guys going to pounce on you. And they going to say, hey, we're going to we're gonna enforce our will on you for you to crumble. And that's not what this is all about. You guys are working behind to start picking up bad habits. So let's not get into bad habits this week. Uh, JSU offensive line, the big uglies up front. Number 60, Amari Catches. 51, Cedric Dunbar. 74, Tony Gray. 62, Vincent Sampson. 72, Dimitri Jordan. Y'all got to open up those lanes this week to allow the JSU running backs to run. Listen, number 22, Peyton Pickett. Son, I'm telling you right now, if you get up underneath them shoulder pads like you've been doing the past couple of weeks and run that ball, they're going to move out the way. They're going to... Open up like the Red Sea. They're gonna open it up for you for you to get up and, for you to get up and down that field because guess what? They don't want that heat. A lot of these guys out there, they they play like they want to tackle, but they ain't really trying to tackle nobody. I'm just calling it the way that I see it. Y'all not hearing me call nobody no names. I'm just simply saying, I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. Some folks they 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 play like they want to play, and some folks play like they want to play. They're playing like they want to play. So let's get out there and make this happen this weekend. Um the big uglies. I know y'all like. Oh, and by the mix, by the way, uh, Peyton Pickett. I think you, uh, Peyton Pickett. I'm going to say this right now. I believe you will be close to 100 yards this week because you know what? Some of this is going to ride on you. So it, it's going to ride on you this week to see what you can really do with that ball. And I believe you can do that as well. I believe you should be close to 100. I ain't talking about 50. 50 as in halfway close. I'm talking about somewhere between the 80, 90 range or even 100 mark. I see you hitting that this week. So come on with the – hey, come on, bring the pain, guys. Like I said, those running backs for JSU, you guys get out there and make this thing happen. Make these folks – Punish them. Y'all got to come out there and punish them this week. The big uglies. I know y'all like coach. Every week you say so much rise on us. It does because guess what? Without you, the offense doesn't go. And this leads me to you guys making sure that Shador Sanders have a pocket back there for him to throw the ball down to the receivers down the field. Why do I say this? Because the Warhawks have a tendency, their defensive backs, that is, have a tendency of wanting to look in the backfield to see what the quarterback is doing. So you know what that means? It's going to be a lot of JSU receivers wide open out there on the field, and Shador Sanders is just going to deliver the ball up and down the field once again like he did last week against uh, Tennessee State. So let's make sure we go ahead and keep him clean this week, and we go ahead and do the things that we need to do. Another thing also is JSU, that JS, the tight end for JSU, you're going to be free this week as well. So please look forward to passes being thrown your way because they're going to be trying to blitz. Uh, they're going to be trying to blitz. The t they're going to be trying to blitz JSU so much, trying to get Shador off rhythm on throwing the ball that that tight end is going to be free. So please make sure you're looking for the ball to come your way, catch that ball, and get it up the field. Now, I do believe Shador is going to have another big game this week throwing the ball. Uh, like I said, Coach Bowden, yeah, he's talking like, you know, they got so much to work on or whatever have you. Yeah, that, that's that old smoke and mirror game that people love to run, you know, before the game happens. Oh, we're just looking to get a first down. Yeah, I, I hear you. That that sounds great. That that sounds real good, Coach. But guess what? You're not over there coaching those young men for nothing. So I'm going to put it to you like this. The receivers for JSU, sure you guys saw the film of the Warhawks playing against Kentucky last week where those daggone receivers were wide open with chest bumping, jumping around to where y'all sick and tired of doing it because, matter of fact, y'all gonna be sick and tired of doing it. Y'all gonna be doing it in your sleep once the game is over with because y'all running up and down the daggone field against the defensive team, catching all these daggone passes. Get out there, have fun this week, guys. Like I always say, it's about having fun and enjoying yourself. And lastly, uh, special teams. I'm a, I, I already booked it already. I'm gonna book it again. This time I'm, I'm putting it. I'm putting it up. I'm putting it on the wall this week. This week Newman gonna take another one to the house. I see it happening. It's gonna happen. It, it's gonna happen. I, man, I love that young man. That young man is special. He's gonna do something else special again this week. Like I said, special team. I'm giving you every facet of the, of the game. Uh, let's make sure everybody contains, stay in your lanes. Don't allow these Warhawks to get any confidence thinking that they can beat you. Keep your foot on their neck and keep moving forward. And I honestly believe if JSU does that, they'll win the game. If not, 
We gonna sit. We gonna sit back and say, "Wow, what happened, Jerry? You gonna be two and one?" So I have the game going. I have the game a little closer than what I've been hearing a lot of folks talking about is gonna be. I think the game is gonna be roughly probably twenty to seventeen. If if JSU come out here and jump on them like I think they can, I think JSU probably put a 30-piece up on them this week. If not, it's going to be a close game, 2017. So, hey, leave your comments below and let me know what you think the score is going to be, also along with how many sacks the defense will get as well as the um, – as well as the number of yards you think should do a sign as a pass for this week. But until next time, guys, if you like the content, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, like these videos, comment on these videos, share these videos, and remember, guys, be the one and lead.